Greetings, listeners. Your host for the night, Zach, here again, introducing you to another episode of The Call, our Call of Cthulhu actual playcast. This show and all of our content are brought to you by the generous support from TJ, Rainweaver, Alec, and KJ, as well as all of our Kofi supporters and donators. Thank you. Another longer intro today as we let you all in on the future plans for The Call COVID edition. If you have not done so, our Kofi page allows you, the listener, to support us in production costs for these podcasts, as well as access to merch, voting, Discord servers, and unlocking additional content goals. So thank you to our Kofi supporters, as the call is in production for a scripted tangent series to fill in the gap during lockdown. We're allowed to have two to three people together at once, so a scripted radio play allows us to create more Cthulhu goodness and maintain COVID guidelines. We are currently in planning and will have episodes coming soon, so please follow our socials for updates. With continued support, we may even keep the radio-style show going after lockdown. Kofi subscribers will also be getting two exclusive shows each month. So, what are you waiting for? Go and join the Coffee Cult for more content. You can even join us on Twitch three times a week, where the community participates in world building and can experience early access to these podcasts during the editing process. More on this in the post notes. But for now... The previous report from our investigators. Having just dealt with the renegade slug from the mysterious corpse, the investigators begin to lay all the pieces out before them as to where to find Alistair and who may be behind this. With the help of Montgomery, will the investigators be able to plan a successful rescue mission? Um, and let us continue down this. Althea? You know, as often as I cannot deny that you have probably saved our lives more than once, but maybe if you could be a little more helpful when it's not just life and death on the line. Simon Amos, is helping us. Amos starts patting Agatha on the side of the arm. Mm. It's the rat, the rat's back, the rat's back. You're talking to the rat again, aren't you? What? You're talking to the rat again, aren't you? Yeah, he's right I there. I am not a rat. The, well, uh, you look like one, Althea. Oh, Althea. Oh, come on. Althea, there's no one on, there's no one there. Really? Then who am I talking to? Nobody. That's the point we're trying to make here. Um, Amos, could you please make me a sanity check? Whoa, <laughs> that, that came out of nowhere. Okay. Uh, 87 out of 53. That's a, that's a, that's yeah, a you don't see a rat. Continue. It's clearly <laughs> nobody. I mean, I, I'm, I know that <laughs> you have seen it I have seen it in the past but she is clearly talking to nobody so what what does the rat have to say so he's disgusted with me apparently so it's, what you're saying Montgomery is that finally are we right are the slugs the root of all of this? Is it a really good no. idea to encourage her like No, let's humor her for about five minutes. Know. You don't know? You... Why would I know? If I knew, I would have told you, like, forever ago. You just said finally getting on the right track. What does yeah, that Yeah, finally getting mean? on the right track. You spend all your time wanting to be at, into theater and making plays and stuff. Good years. You never change. Uh, okay, we'll come back to that later. No, we won't, sure. actually. Yes, we will. I'm a figment of your imagination. You are... What are you talking about? He glimpsed out of existence. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. The sassy spectral rat. That's it. That's it. The next time. The He's... next time I'm talking to him, I swear to god, oh, I'm gonna snap now? his little rat neck. Al- Althea, you maybe you should make an effort to not speak with him when when uh, you see him. No, 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 no! You should totally keep doing this. They're, they're not for any personal satisfaction or anything. I just—I don't think it's funny at all. Where were we before that little shit showed up? Oh, please don't encourage her delusions. So, the trunk, the trunk. Right, the trunk. And, the and then Simon's still sort of standing there, just sort of looking at Elsie, and is like, "Yeah." Do you think it's possible? So Skeet was very, very. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Skeet was very, very anti. Like, he was very. He doesn't even want to talk about the things that happened there. Specifically, would you? He just thinks books are dangerous, too. Well, that's a, that's a questionable thing in and of itself. But do you think. I, I think said anyone living in an area with a cult of the likes that we saw, saw that they left of Swole's Gullet, I think he has a right to be afraid. So, oh, yeah. So, here's the thing. 
and I could be way off here. So let's, let's say something. These slugs, wherever the hell they came from. Let's say that they started infecting the people in Swole's Gullet. And, and whatever, whatever the purpose of doing that was. Same, and, and, and the people that we saw at the lake, they were, maybe they were resistant to whatever was going on, and so they were killed or sacrificed, and they were tr- trying to, to do whatever to them, the same as happening to everybody mm. else. Mm, Here's the thing, so, Mo- so Montgomery, the other farmer, he finds this box in the mines, in the mines, was, was it mining, right? Yeah, it, it was, was in the mines. It was found in the mines. And Ooh. he kept it for a while. Um, as you mentioned, Montgomery the farmer, mm-hmm. Montgomery the rat comes back. Oh, for God's <laughs> <laughs> He just blinks back in and he's like, Farmer? I'm, I'm not a farmer. Uh, Wait. <laughs> not that I heard this. Well, then no, don't say don't. anything. I'm not a farmer. I'm Montgomery. Wait, wait. How many Montgomerys do you know? Just the one. Just you. Wait, is the invisible rat back again? What invisible rat? There is no invisible rat. He's not invisible. He's right there. No, he isn't. Psychologically, for her it is. (laughs) Which is why <laughs> everyone could see Agatha with the hand out gently. I love it. Which is why we should not be encouraging her to see him. We should be encouraging her to ignore. Wait. And and and, and accept reality. Wait. Um. There's steps and stages. You are atheist. Ma- you are <laughs> an atheist. <laughs> alienist. Alienist. Doesn't matter. Yeah. I was gonna say. You, my bad. Wait. Wait. You're you're not a. Fr- are you? Are you like Montgomery, like crushed by a giant bug rock, Montgomery? Oh, so there's a man behind you now. No. No, we're just gonna we're just gonna live it. see what happens here. This is very very entertaining. Uh, for one second though, I want to explain to Agatha that for some reason, mm-hmm. the 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 eye socket behind your leather eye patch yes seems to be getting hot, <laughs> like it f- starts feeling warm. Uncomfortably warm? Y- yeah, it's getting to that point. Like, there's something twitching about it. Like. Okay, so I'll probably start touching around it just to see what the temperature is like okay. that. But is it, is it affecting me mentally? No. no. It just feels, it just you know feels what I mean? Hot? Just like you get that, that hot feeling. It's okay. just that, yeah, when you're missing an eye like any of us know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like last week when I missed my eye. No. You, no. you know, it's just feeling like really warm, like throbbing. Slightly? Almost like a headache? Yeah, almost like a headache. Okay, so I'll probably be holding my head being like, so is the man behind you? Hmm. No. Are you? Am I what? Are you Montgomery? I'm Montgomery. Yeah, but... Uh, uh, that's who? Yeah, I'm Montgomery. Did you find the box? What box? The puzzle box with the weird inscriptions in the mind. Did you find that? Uh... Maybe I Don't did. Maybe. And maybe it's a, I a didn't. yes or I'm no. enigmatic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, you know, I just. Oh my god. Oh my god. I don't know what happened. Oh my god. I don't know what happened. A- Agatha, Agatha, I think I, I, I might, I might need. I, 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 I think I'm talking to a dead man as a rat. Okay. Agatha, at this point, it's almost unbearable, this heatness, and you feel you need to rip. Like, there's pressure building there. Okay. And the, the gauze wrapping, yeah. like it's stuffed in, sort of, you feel it needs to come out. So, having that headache, I probably will have my head down like this, but removing. Yeah. So that's not an immediate physical. So, Althea, physical. Mm-hmm. as you're talking to Agatha about it. You notice her put her head down, lift up the eye patch, and start taking gauze yeah. and wrapping out of her uh, eye socket. Agatha, what are you doing? That's that's probably not good for, for... I just have to do this. Just let me do this, please. And it's I'm just ripping it out. I'm yeah, just... uh, once it's once you take it out, and it's like uh, black and a bit bloody, mm-hmm. this, this wrapping that's on the breakfast table now. You people are disgusting. <laughs> Even the rat is just like... <laughs> that's uh, the least disgusting thing we've seen. Um, but time. as you raise your head up, and yeah. you don't have, like, the patches rose up, yeah. 
you see a rat from the empty eye socket. I can see the rat. Just like this glowing rat <laughs> from it. this empty. It's all you can Dope. see. Dope. That's all you can see from that eye socket. Like you see your regular eye, which f compensates yeah. and fills in what it is, but through this, through the empty, the the eyeless socket, you just see a glowing rat. So if you were to so, cover up one eye, then I could see it clearly. If I could well, so if you cover up your eye, yeah, and it's just the socket, like you don't see anything else, you just see basically a rat. basically it's like how, yeah, 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 I know yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. What it is. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking at you, but is that like, ah! as soon as I take that gauze out, is that pressure relief? Yeah. I'm just gonna probably just look at uh, Althea and be like, oh my god. Sanity check. I know! <laughs> I know! I think my my rat might be a dead, but just. 25 out of 57. Dope. You are fine. I'm fine. You're fine. You've seen crazier stuff. <laughs> but I can for sure see. No, but I can't hear him though. No, yes, you can't. I was gonna say. You can't. You can just sort of see them for some reason, that that socket. But I mean, my point is that if you cover up your good eye through the socket, you can't see anything else. You don't see Althea, you don't see the table. Like it's not really, it's, it's just like, in your brain, you just see yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. like this glowing, just rat yeah. that looks generally enigmatic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So, oh. I, okay. Deep, deep breaths. Off. Hold on. Deep breaths. Off no, let her breathe. Your rat just, is most, not the first a dead she said. man. Your rat's not a dead man. Of course I'm not, and I'm not a rat. What That's are you? Are you the same? Anymore. Are you okay? Okay. 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 Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Okay. So, Swill's gullet. What was I talking about? Swill's gullet. I'm gonna ignore you for now. Well, she's Swill's gullet. I'm gonna nudge Amos and be like. There's a there's a rat on her shoulder. Holy shit! Well, let's not forget that Agatha nudges you and looks at you with a gaping <laughs> eye socket. <laughs> and it's sort of like as soon as she does that kind of like look away, I'm like, oh god. Uh, and then when she says that look back, I'm like, wait, you wait, what? There's a rat on her shoulder. At Holy some, shit! And at some point, Simon did actually leave. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's We've been right. trying to detail what Simon's Poor been doing Simon. for a while. Okay, uh, but no one ever knows. Okay, so so. Okay, so there's a cult. There's a cult in Swill's Gullet that's been created by some kind of weird slugs. Or, or inspired by, or influenced is influenced by, or perhaps the cult brought the slugs in. Marion, I want it. you to think about what you saw a day and a half ago and get back to me about that. Good point. <laughs> now, um, um, so. Okay. Can we talk about the fact that she can now see the invisible rat? Yeah, I'm still. Shoulders? I'm still. I'm just. There might even be instances where I'm putting the patch down and back <laughs> up just to see. It's disturbing. <laughs> so, so, okay, so, yeah. okay, ignore, ignore, I'm ignoring you right there's, now. There's for no a one moment. there. Just, just continue your thoughts, uh, Marion. Okay. That's not so, entirely true. So, so, Montgomery found this box in the mine. Yes. Was there anything in the box? Yes. Was it a stone? Yeah, you already knew this. Remember, like, if you knew it, I know it, right? Yeah, okay. So right? this is your knowledge. You kept that <laughs> you, you kept that box for for a long time. No, I was killed. No, I wasn't killed. Now. I just mean a big rock fella to die and killed Montgomery the farmer. <laughs> I'm not I'm not a dead man. I'm I'm so much more than that. Okay, but And I'm not a rat. Okay. So so you're you're the, the stone that was inside the puzzle box is the one that eventually found its way into Amos's hand. Yeah, the yeah. Sankara okay. stone. Okay, how long did Montgomery have the stone? Oh, uh, not long. We don't know that. Like, you know. When the box went to the general store, was the stone inside? Oh, uh, who, who knows? No. Yes, because we took it out, didn't we? No, no we no, found it, it was in the caves. We found it in the caves. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We swapped the puzzle box for the stone. I can't tell you stuff you don't already know. No, no. no. I'm just, I'm trying to like, we put the yeah. like puzzle put box a story in together. In the, yeah. I'm trying to remember, sorry. Oh, this is Montgomery talking, everything I've been saying. Let, mm -hmm. let them. Yeah. No, well, well. We okay, so. Montgomery is killed as a result of the wow. box or whatever else is going on. Montgomery the farmer. Well, not like killed, killed. 
big space rock came down and... And landed on him? That kills most of us. Yep. Most of you. Okay. Anyway! Wow. At some some point, the box ends up at the general store in Skeet's possession. With or without the stone, we don't know. Yeah, those things are tricky. Yeah. With the... He is the only one we know from Swill's gullet who has survived and is... he from Skill's gullet? Swill skills. (laughs) Is he from Swill's gullet? Oh, God, I love saying that. (laughs) We... Well, we assumed he was because he knew... He knew... Well, yeah, he's, you know, he's from wherever. I don't know anything. It's just... Listen, I mean, I only know what you know, sort of. I can only agree with things that you already know. I'm a figment of your imagination. Oh, as, God. as I see, and he chuckles. <laughs> as I, and I'm watching it, and I'm seeing all the actions. Yeah, you're seeing him just gesticulating, he's, he's, and he's not. He's shaking he, his head. He's giggling. He's yeah. doing all this kind of stuff, and I'm just, I'm flabbergasted. Yeah. No, you know, I, okay. I don't know how to put this. I mean, it's just you need to follow a certain train of thought okay. for, for me to stay around. But so, you've been getting caught up in this in originally. The, the first. <laughs> okay. Listen. The first thought that came to mind was whether or not, when Skeet had the box, it provided him some kind of protection from everything else that was going on. Okay. So anyway, there's a cult in Swill's Gullet. And then Simon and Alistair, they send out um, the doctor and, and Heinrich and those to investigate. Something happens at the Corbett farmstead, and Heinrich is the only one who survives. But no, no. is Owen Grimmery says Simon was uh, uh, um, Heinrich wasn't the only one who survived. Who else? The soldier. Boy. The soldier. Oh, right. The chewed crab apple okay. face guy. Right. No, that was that was Heinrich. that was Heinrich. No, sorry. Simon. Yeah, the soldier. Right. He was the one who was in the town and was attacking us. Yes. Okay. So the soldier and Heinrich survive, sort of, because they've been changed by whatever the same thing was that changed all the other individuals in Swill's Gullet. But whatever happened at that time, either the people there were killed or or died or something happened to them, and then Walter Corbett, maybe he wasn't in Swill's Gullet when this happened, or maybe... Maybe he had left Swill's Gullet and purchased, he survived as well, and purchased the Church of Contemplation or whatever other probably to continue on what was happening. Yeah, that's what we're trying to get at. But was Heinrich infected, though? He seemed pretty normal every time we ran into him, minus the whole Tommy gun thing. And he seemed pretty competent when he engaged us in the library. Now, what I will toss in is that he did that that crazy house we went to where we found Father O'Malley. It had a vat of that black crap being grown or something. It was in like a little vat in the back. Mm-hmm. We, we, in the shed. We went there following Heinrich, didn't we? No. Albert Gall. Yeah. That was Albert Gall. Mm-hmm. Now, is that... Now, now are we getting around to different tangents? But So how is that... Tied in. Heinrich seems to have been not infected whatsoever. But he is obviously either for whatever is happening with Walter Corbett or and or against whatever we're doing. Causality is not equal causation. So they're you know, they may not be connected directly but indirectly. But he seems to have been fine. Cause if if he and his soldier buddy were infected at the same time, he would also have been doing all the crazy stuff that Soldier Boy was doing back in Swill's Gullet. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe he didn't like the fact that we were poking around in things that shouldn't be poked around. Also possible. But my, my point is, he he's involved. He wants it. Uh, he, he was involved, but he wasn't infected. I will agree with that. Yes. As far as we know. As far as we know. Fair. Mm hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff you already knew. Yeah, that's great. 
This is Montgomery. Montgomery. I'll meet you in a ditch. <laughs> okay. Yes, but all of these things have come to us in pieces and fragments. At some point, you have to start putting the puzzle together. Oh, no, exactly. At some point, you have to start putting the puzzle together. Well, excuse me if we've been too busy fighting for our lives most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Can I, like, try to flick him off my shoulder? Do you want to try to flick yes, him Yes, I do, actually, because I believe do? he's there. <laughs> like, actually there. I can feel a weight. Can I feel okay. his weight on my shoulder? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to try and kind of just push him off my shoulder. Okay, so you reach up your hand, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you try to flick him. Mm -hmm. He slightly recoils. Mm -hmm. And as you flick him, I need you to roll a power roll, please. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh oh. <laughs> Ooh, 17 out of 80. So that's uh, that's a hard success. Yeah, it's extreme. very close to a extreme. But it is one away hard. from an extreme. As you flick him, you know, other times when he sort of just disappeared, um, he explodes. Wait, like in energy, like there's just like this, he sort of recoils mm -hmm. and opens up his mouth, his little rat mouth to say something, to squeak, to do anything. Mm -hmm. And as you flick him, he just sort of breaks into pieces. Not, I don't mean, it's just energy. It, it just dissipates. It just dissipates, but you can see mm -hmm. it dissipate, is as my point. that happens, mm -hmm. I'm just going to quickly get up and be like, what'd you do? What? what do you mean, what, what did I do? I flicked him off my shoulder. He's being annoying. But Wait, he was there. Hang on a sec. You had a rat telling you stuff and you just you just told him to fuck off? Well, basically, he wasn't really telling me anything that apparently I didn't already know and wasn't being helpful in any way whatsoever. <laughs> well, he wouldn't tell you anything you didn't already know. According to him, that's true. Okay, so, Marion. <laughs> yeah? Um... You are witnessing something, a group psychosis. Yep. Because this is something since it's just so out of the realm. Because it's, it's going to affect all three of them. So I just wanted to let your, uh, Marion, you understand. So Amos, you feel a weight on your shoulder. I do what now? <laughs> and you look over and there's a very pissed off rat Jesus on, your, on your shoulder. Amos. Just Fucking Is that called for? Did you, 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 you did that not, was not called for? A button did not do one with anyone's shit right um, now. I'm just gonna be like, it's on you now. Yes. Can Althea see him? Yeah. Okay. Everyone but Marion. Group psychosis, Marion. Uh. I gotta keep you innocent <laughs> as long as possible. <laughs> this is, mm, you know what, mm, Montgomery? Mm, this mm, is, you can mm, just mm. stay right where you are because I am done with anybody or anyone or anything or any rat that's not going to actually help us with the situation we're in. Let's this is what Well, she's doing that. I want to try to poke him. Well, just, <laughs> last time somebody poked him, he blew up. Did you see it though? No, I didn't. That's right, so you don't know the that. Last time somebody poked him, he jumped on someone else's okay, shoulder. So there's a rat on your shoulder. Fuck. And Agatha, are you going to poke the rat? I want to poke the rat. Okay. I slap her hand. Okay, it, it is an opposed dexterity check. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> because it, it, yeah. it would be. Is that no. so oh, you, that's just 29 out of 45. So you've made a regular deck, Correct. Uh, a regular difficulty dexterity check. So now you need to make a dexterity check. It's opposed. Okay. 45. Uh, 45. Uh, 45. Uh, 45. Yeah, that Sorry. would just be a regular. Out of 50. Yeah, so he Sorry. manages to bat your hand away. <laughs> oh. I just... <laughs> to yourself right now, I'm dealing with, I'm processing a lot of information. This is why you don't have whiskey at breakfast. Uh, I'm the only one that had whiskey at breakfast, so unless Althea got totally smashed, she got, there's no excuse for this. Why can't you see, why can't she see, why can't you, why can't she see you? It, because, no. see, see what? What? Just, yeah. why can't she see you? Well, she's not like crazy like the rest of you. Crick. Yeah, yeah. So well, I mean, he, he can hear the rat. He he can. Oh. Yeah. Am I the only one? And Althea can, can as well. So you, you can guys see it. Hear the rat. He's like, yeah. I, I mean. Oh, according to him, he's not a rat. I'm not a rat. He's not a farmer either. Well, I'm not a farmer. What look are, at me. What are you then? You look like a rat. I'm stuffed. Why is it important? 
You look like a rat. I'm a s shared psychosis. All right, so why, why are you on my shoulder? Well, she flicked me away. I, and you believe in me too. You uh, saw me before. Uh, because you probably don't had a bottle and a half. what that means. Yeah, all I'm saying is that you're on the right track. Wonderful. Wonderful what? Apparently we're on the right track according to this invisible rat. Not rat. Yes, I'm not a rat. So what is you then? Stuff. That's helpful. I'm not very helpful. I'm getting that. Yeah. <laughs> so can you elaborate possibly on the particular path that you are implying we seem to be on the right track of? Oh, the, there's there's connections. It's just you've all been sort of lost in your own little ways and Getting stuff. Getting blown out of a building, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that must have sucked. It wasn't pleasant. No. Mm. Talking about the explosion. I'm not figured. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, are you okay, man? Probably what? not. Should probably talk to somebody. As fits. He seems like he cares. <laughs> Montgomery? Montgomery? Yes, flicky woman. Where is Skeet from? Christ. Where is Skeet from? Is he from Swole's Gullet? I mean, nobody's really from Swole's Gullet. Nobody's Actually. really from Swole's Gullet. Does Wait. That mean? Nobody really is from Swole's Gullet. I mean, nobody's... Where's where you're from really from, you know? The, the place that you're... All right, let's not mm. get into the metaphysical here. Was he born and really? raised in Swole's really? Gullet? Really? Let's not get into the metaphysical? Have you seen me? Yes. <laughs> you yeah, look rat like a rat. Us. Just so that you two are up to par, the rat is currently debating whether or not we should be talking about the metaphysical. So why it. do you look like a rat? We should not rat. be talking Well, what else am I going to look like sitting on your rat. shoulder? But it's not invisible, Mary. A parrot? Well, yes, it's because it's not real. All right. I'm just going to I'm just going to toss something out here real quick. One of two possibilities. Either Oh, this is going to be good. We're all fucking nuts, and Marion's the only sane one. <laughs> Possible. Which leads to one of two outcomes. Either we all have the same shared dream, which does not make any sense at all, or Marion needs to drink and catch up. I very calmly stand up, walk over to the door, open it, and yell out for uh, the nearest member of the staff, who I'm going to say is a man named Jonah. Jonah, can you come in here, please? The fuck? Uh, and That's point, like, I, 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 I gesture at them and I say, "Do you see anything on one of their shoulders?" So Jonah walks in, um, middle-aged man, um, seems quite clean, nice fingernails, um, and says, <laughs> uh, "On on their on on I their point on my shoulder on their shoulder, Matt. There's a there's a finger on his shoulder." Exactly. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Will that be all? Yes. Um, thank, thank you for proving my point. Uh, I am apologize for the mess that, we're, that we've left in here. And he looks over and he can see a chair tipped over and there's like puke on it. Like onto the floor. And he's like, ah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. And he just turns around and leaves. Yes. Be better question. Ask Simon to come in here. He'll be back shortly. He's just contacting <laughs> Mr. Black. Perfect. Then Listen. ask him what he sees on our shoulder. Listen, does it matter? What What did he say? He says doesn't matter, which is kind of completely against the point. Listen, I can see my point is. Point, let, I think the point. Oh, let, let, let the rat tell him say the point. <laughs> Every single time he says the point is, someone cuts him off. <laughs> like literally five <laughs> times in a row. <laughs> He has been like, what I'm trying to say is someone has cut him <laughs> off and it's driving me fucking nuts. Also and then he, But at this point, I was expecting this. Continue, Agatha. No! <laughs> fucking say it! Continue. <laughs> Zach is going to lose some sanity here. Christ! When she says the point is, I put my finger up to her face and I go, mm-mm. You. You know, you know, Idris Elba, in Pacific Rim, where he's like, you, stop talking. You. Start talking. That's yeah, like no. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Does everyone allow? <laughs> I will throw a teacup at the nearest person that speaks that isn't an invisible rat. Oh, Althea is allowing okay. it. Teacup. <laughs> She's not done arguing with the rat. <laughs> the point is. <laughs> so Montgomery the rat says, "Listen, I don't like this any more than the rest of you. I am confused." 
I don't know. But what else was I supposed to look like? Honestly, you went into the catacombs and there was a room full of rats around the box. What was I supposed to look like? You wanted me to look like a parrot? Rats were what was there. So then what are you? I don't know. I just know that I have memories and knowledge that Montgomery, the miner, has. Because he's not a farmer, he's a he miner. A so Montgomery and I have miner. other memories, but I don't know. All I know is I'm supposed to be as difficult as possible to deal with. <laughs> oh, because right. if I tell you the answers or the path or the way to go, you're going to mess it up. Does that make sense? No, it does make sense. Are you going to flick me away to oblivion? And he sort of motions toward Agatha with like the come at me, bro. <laughs> 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 A little beatbox. Come at me, bro. <laughs> I, I, what, else, what, what, what else? I, I just know that I'm supposed to be with you guys, but it's very hard for me to hold together to hold to to you know the center does not hold it's it's right. hard to okay so the rat aside for a moment I'm not a rat okay you aside for a moment okay just chill there for a second says All the right. one who beat me to oblivion so Colton Swole's gullet Oh, we're talking sense again. Whatever happens there, I mean, cult silence. Whatever sense. happens there, Walter Corbett leaves or escapes or whatever. Heinrich and the soldier also are not killed by what's going on, but the soldier remains because we know because he attacked us while we were there. And Heinrich messed left. up, but yeah. I think it's very possible that Heinrich, Heinrich, most likely. We never really saw him with anyone else, did we? The first time we saw Heinrich was outside the uh, the, the new, cent- new England Center yeah. of Antiquities, and he shot up the place. We'd heard right. about him before, and he... If I'm... C- c- Marion, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was under the, the estate's... Uh, new, the Center of Antiquities employ, was he not? Wasn't he, he was, partner with Barnabas? yes. So he knew where it was. And he knew Simon and Alistair probably wouldn't give up on what they had been doing. Of course not. I think, and this makes me feel terrible now, that I think that he mostly just wanted whatever happened in Swill's Gullet to stay in Swill's Gullet. But, and, and all of those things in his home? I mean, those same sorts of things are at the center of they're it's, at the center, Marion. These things that, that Alistair and Simon say that they keep to keep them from being out in the world. Heinrich was collecting them as well. Do you think that he stole the items from the New England Center? He's the th- he, in addition to to shooting up the place, he's the thief. Maybe, but that would be something for Simon and Alistair to answer. They knew what they had there, or maybe he was just going and getting things before they could get their hands on it because he didn't trust them. He, they were the ones who sent him. And the doctor and the sol- soldier. What was his name? Do we remember? Do we know? Or just no, his name? No, we just mentioned that boy who had We sent them to Swell's Gullet. And what happened to them there, we don't know. We just know that he want, maybe well, wanted it anyway. They sent, they sent them to stop what was happening from happening. and Maybe. And it was more difficult agenda. to... Wait a second. Can I ask? I, 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 I need permit. I need just the the chance to ask two questions. One first to Marion. Do you have any idea what Heinrich's last assignment was before Swill's Gullet? Do I? No, because you didn't know every agent, and no. Heinrich Barnabas was an agent, mm. and Heinrich was like a contractor. Barnabas had his team, mm. and even though they're under the employ of New England Center of Antiquities, Barnabas is the team leader to arrange his team, but that information could exist 
um, whether in records from the building, the New England Center of Antiquities, or if Simon remembered, or if Alistair remembered. But that would be the place to find that information. That that was never that was never one of my duties. It's possible that we could find the we could find records uh, filed with with the New England Center. There were there were many records that I was not privy to. There's a follow-up question after that, but I'm going to ask my second primary question. Bear with me with this one. I look at Montgomery. Montgomery. Yep. Have you been in contact with anyone else besides us? How could I? I mean, I don't mean within recent times. I mean, before we came in contact with the stone. I don't remember. Okay. I, I, I figured it out. I don't know. I, I sort of phase in and out. It all gets very loopy. But yeah. Yeah. But then again, I, I, I only really know what you all know, so... Montgomery manifested when we got hold of the stone. Yeah. What color was the stone? It was gold, too, it was wasn't it? Amber. So it's the same color as what I'm seeing, right? For Montgomery? Yeah, the glow is amber. When oh, I said I he's glowing. Okay. No, no, yeah. I meant I'm talking about yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, that glow, remember said that you yeah. see like Montgomery glowing? Yeah, it is a yellowish amber color. So would, because the Sankara stone, did it have a personality or a, something attached to it, and that's what Montgomery is? Uh, I just look at him. A sentience that came from it. I don't know. I've always felt more like I'm, um, I'm, uh, like the rind of a lemon, which sounds really strange. So let me explain. I, I feel um, that maybe Montgomery the Miner, <laughs> who uh, he has sass. Uh, no, yeah. Montgomery the Miner has um, found this box. Maybe he opened it, and maybe a piece of him became imbued in the stone. Like the but stone. maybe a piece of everything that the stone is in contact with has become imbued and maybe that's what I am I don't know I know a lot of stuff but I only know stuff at certain points and I'm that's why I'm difficult sort of I mean I could just be a figment of your imagination right though ha 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 out of the four of us who's had contact with that stone we know you have yeah did I because I? I carried it for a while didn't I yeah, just us two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that does make sense. Oh, great! So, a little pieces of us are now little pieces of you. Great. And you said I don't answer questions. You great. flick me into oblivion. You know how hard it is to maintain a form. Technically, I just tried to flick you off my shoulder, so I apologize for that. No, you don't. No, I don't. That no. that means that damn good years. Okay, hang on a sec. Let me ask. Let me ask you one of these then, Montgomery. Instead of asking you direct fact questions, has there been times where we've said things that have triggered latent memories? Yeah, from time to time. I'm not sure what they does are. Montgomery rem- uh, does Montgomery remember seeing Skeet? I, I damn it! I, I don't know. Or Walter Corbett. Fuck. All right. Uh, I mean, these are. Just... Okay. Okay. I think. <laughs> I think at this point we're gonna have to talk. Start. Can discussions about going to the Silver Toilet launch? Well, yeah, it's probably a good idea. I have to ask a scary question. Something that we need to think about now that we've come across this Heinrich thing. Yeah. Um, the the center. Why? This could go one of two completely opposite ways, and I just need us all to be on the same page when we think about it. What do? What can you tell us about the New England Center of Antiquities that, like, it's it's hard. There's so many different ways that I can ask this question. You're I'm, I'm not sure what you're looking for. That's it, it, Heinrich was trying to make sure that the center didn't get artifacts, but he wasn't using them, which means he was trying to keep them hidden. Or it's I'm a, I'm a, under the impression he was trying to keep them hidden. I, th- I think 
saying he wasn't using them is is jumping rather to conclusions. We saw him shooting at us with a Tommy gun and trying to blow us up with a grenade. Absolutely. We know nothing else about this man. Those are, let me finish, those are not artifacts, those are weapons. He has been acquiring artifacts like the center and hiding them, not using them. He didn't seem to be under any influence of any item like we've been dealt. His house did seem to have been influenced by the artifacts themselves. Because they were being looted. Someone removed the covering that was established on that painting, which means he had it covered. So he's not intending to use them. Well, he wasn't intending to use them. Now, my question is, and I think we all need to just, just take this with a grain of salt and just think, keep in the back of our minds, why is he trying to keep them away from the center? He's unstable. Or was unstable. The rest his soul. Okay. You're talking to three people who have discussed talking to an invisible rat. I think I'm not saying you are any more stable, but you are slightly less violent. March. So my, my point is, is there, should we be considering that there is a reason that the center shouldn't have these items? You're choosing to take the word of a madman who tried to blow up a library... I've never heard his word, so I can't be taking his word. And he blew up You're my apartment. You're assuming I don't like his him. word. You're choosing to assign a narrative to a man you know very little about in yep. order to paint someone who you do know and who has actively uh, aided you as a villain. That's the I, thing I, we I do don't not know, know the but center of antiquity. We were just contacted to to investigate. We don't know anything about. It was a blind phone call. Yeah. Which you chose to accept. You clearly yeah. trusted something. I trust money. I was getting paid. Now, I'm not saying that I am automatically in the ballpark that the New England Center of Antiquities is in any way evil or dire. However, you need to start... When, I'm, when I start investigating criminals, I need to be thinking from their point of view in order to find them. This does not make if you sound just, more credible. We, I swear to God, how many teacups are on this table? I prepare to throw one. Being that that's entirely my job and why your why why your group called me, I think it does. That being said, Heinrich does not know any of us. If I were him, I would also be approaching us with extreme prejudice. Now, I do not agree or condone his actions and personally if he were still alive i'd be searching the son of a bitch down right now and taking care of him myself for what he's done oh. that being said oh and then you see montgomery sort of like just oh 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 i'm a, i might actually know something but you already know it too though well, well, I know what. You were in the middle of a sentence. Uh, I will finish that yeah. sentence in a moment. Um, Heinrich. Right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. You might be. You might be so close. I just get this inkling that. He was after you guys. Yeah, I kind of got that. Yeah. You guys, what do y'all have in common? That where were you? We were all in the cave. And we were all in Swill's gullet. Ah, my work here is done. And he claps his hands and he disappears. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what that. Did so, he think that we were infected? Maybe. Last we heard about Swill's gullet, so let me, let me, okay, Marion, let me finish th th that thought slash add, add a little bit of context that Mr. Invisible just gave us, provided you want to take that information. I I'm having trouble trusting any information from you at the moment. Hmm, well, let's see how well this goes then. All right, um, the rat seems to agree to some degree that Heinrich's motivation was purely based off of our proximity to Swill's Gullet. Um, we all know the last thing that we heard about Swill's Gullet is that the military has it locked down. Correct? 
we and Skeet are the only ones to have left that. As we've even declared it, you yourself, Althea, that, that virally infected, that tainted area. He's going. He was going around and cleaning up the mess. Again, I don't agree or condone his actions, but if I were in his shoes with the knowledge that he had, I cannot say that I... I mean, killing innocents is... He was not involved in Will's death. That was gall. But he did blow up my fucking apartment, so... There's a little bit of a connection. But I can understand his motivation. That being said... He's been collecting artifacts and not bringing them to the center. He isn't a direct employee, but he does know that the center collects these for security purposes, or at least they claim. Why would he not? Why does he not trust the New England Center of Antiquities? Because you can only trust yourself. Or he chooses to collect them for his own sake. Or there is an agenda there that maybe he had. We just don't know. Either way. I think Heinrich's part in this story ended in the library. Hmm. But he's... The only, the only thing that continues, though, is just a big question mark. As far as we're aware, Simon and Alistair are the center. Yes, we, they founded it. Perfect. They are choosing to pursue this endeavor. Obviously, they're supporting us in this. Well, Alistair, obviously, he doesn't have a say in this, but by vicariously, right? Mm -hmm. Heinrich was looking to shut it down. Okay. Obviously, our intervention has spawned things. There's this invisible rat most of us can see. There's the ichor that's following us around. There's a number of other activities that, whilst not entirely by our actions started but by our actions ended um he is there there i've just putting that out there that's 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 the thought the say the center is pursuing swill's gullet whilst heinrich was trying to shut it down take your thoughts on trust from that that doesn't change my thoughts on trust it doesn't need to i just think it needs to be said out loud we need to be aware and understand why that discrepancy exists between those two. Clearly, he had been doing, working in opposition to the center for a long time. Either in opposition or tangential. If, as Agatha was saying, he was collecting artifacts for his own purposes, be they nefarious or otherwise, he may not even have known he was in opposition to the center until he was contacted by, by Barnabas. He for, shot us up outside the center. He did. I'm saying we know very little about his motivations. That's fair. We, we do know he was, he was going after us as, uh, and, and, th really the only connection is to Swill's gullet. Mm -hmm. So it's likely is, is exactly as you say. He was cleaning up loose ends. Yes. My counterpoint, which I think is probably the more important of the two, is we know just as little about the center's intentions as Heinrich's. We know quite a bit more. What are the center's intentions? They're collecting artifacts to keep them out of uh uh, out, out of public space to, to protect uh, to protect the world to protect humanity and to study them if we I, know about about there there's so m much in this world we don't understand we don't know we can't help anyone we can't protect anyone if we don't understand it agreed my point but that's just words you mm. have to build up trust my point is his could be the exact same there are a lot of conclusions that we're jumping to here. There were connections that, were, that we were making earlier with respect to uh, Walter Corbett and uh, Carl Stanford and the Silver Twilight Lodge. Mm -hmm. The only thing at this point is we have gone everywhere but 
the Silver Twilight Lodge where we think Alistair is. And Alistair right now is also a key player in what we need to accomplish or get answers. So if you don't trust the New England Center of Antiquities, then I will go to rescue Alistair with Simon and without you. But if you feel that that they, that they cannot be trusted, and if you feel that Alistair and Simon, and by extension the center, are in some way nefarious, perhaps you should not be the one to come and rescue him. I was going to ask where the dog is. Mm-hmm. Where is that is now? a good question. Where is the dog? You don't see the dog. No. Right? It's not in the room with you. Mm. Where did you leave the dog? Where was the last place I remember seeing the dog? In the lab, I think. Yeah, it was the last time we saw the dog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go looking for it while you guys uh, continue. This so Althea thing. just gets up from this intense <laughs> conversation. I am also going to because this is a very <laughs> uncomfortable conversation right now. And I also, have to take a break. Yeah, because she had because th- she's had a thought and now she has to follow it. <laughs> uh, if they both get up and leave, then Marion will also get up and leave. Okay, so everyone is getting <laughs> We can up walk and talk. I mean, <laughs> Is everyone getting up and going looking for the dog that... Actually, Alfie only thought about it. She yeah, didn't bring true. it up. I feel like I made my point. I sit and drink coffee. I think, I think, well, I'm going to walk and talk. Yeah. Back to Walter Corbett, purchasing the Church of Contemplation. I think this Reverend Michael Thomas was just a convert. I mean, who better to bring into a cult than someone who's been accused of rather disgusting crimes? And Albert, I mean, I'm interested to know how he fits into this because there was something actually outside, outside character. This was a conversation I think that Simon had with Amos, not with Althea there, about Albert Gall. Okay. About um, Albert Gall is also a sin eater. You were all there, I believe. Yeah, yeah. We're all there. So Albert's also a sin eater. Yeah. And Simon said that Explain eventually eventually it would that he had become obsessed with essentially the reason he is the way he is is because of the things that are inside him. When was he admitted to the institution? Escaped in 1917. That's right. I have a... See, Boys! <laughs> listen, listen. My thought is this. Albert Gall is a sin eater. I don't think he's possessed by a parasite. I think he's drawn to the places where these things have happened. Y- yep, makes a lot of sense. That's why he's always there. He's following the trail of people who have committed horrible... done horrible things. And either he is doing something to them, maybe... Or he's just one step behind them as they're doing it. That did, did makes we, a lot of sense. And I think if we go to the Silver Twilight Lodge, we will also once again encounter Albert Gall. I was going to say, we didn't kill Gall, did we? No. no. He's always escaped. Fuck. Shit. So he has been. So Gall would have also been following Heinrich then. That would make sense. Everywhere we found. We thought Heinrich and Gall were working together for we a did. period of time. But no, it's because Heinrich was going to these places because he was cleaning up a mess. And Albert Gall was going to these places because he was drawn to the evil that was there. Heinrich so th- put a bomb in my place and then Albert Gall took Will there afterwards. That, that, that makes sense. Maybe. Or maybe Heinrich, maybe Heinrich thought that he was possessed and I, who knows? Who knows? These are questions we won't unfortunately have the answer to. As the keeper, I just love throwing out so much information and just watching you piece it together. <laughs> <laughs> it's great because- So you know, Heinrich and Albert are connected, but not because they know each other, just no. because they're just following the, the same thread for different reasons. We're following breadcrumbs that and then Heinrich is trying to clean us and them up and then Albert is following shortly behind or in lieu with us or Albert is following the same breadcrumbs That's what Easy, or I'm Albert saying. is following us we're, Sorry, all, what I meant to say. we're oh, all yeah. following the same threads just for different reasons 
That's why he would have been at the Church of Contemplation at around the same time th that we were. And yes. also why the cultists at the Church of Contemplation seemed to be antagonistic towards him as well. Now they here's didn't, the they, they, they were not welcoming him. No, no, he was not a part of their group. No. Now here's the next terrifying question. So if the Sin Eater shit is exactly the way that you are saying one. it. <laughs> <laughs> So, sorry, sorry, I gotta he's stay still, out of it. He's still I gotta coming stay to grips with how his life is. I'm grips with the concept of this. Keep going. Zach's fine with it. He believes in all this shit. No. Um, <laughs> so if, if, if Sin Eaters work the way that Simon's been saying, that there is a connection between a couple of them, so I am linked to Simon. Mm -hmm. So then Gaul has to be tied to somebody. Makes perfect sense that it's, uh, that it's either Carl Stanford or Michael Thomas. Or even Walter Corbett. Fuck, if they if there's a if there those three people are as close together as we think they are, it could be all of them or I, I don't, or them someone the else I don't think being tied to another person is a necessity of sin eating. I think it's just a byproduct. That's fair, except I do remember there being one weird thing in the sewers of Boston. We saw a pile of used sugar. Similarly to how we woke Simon. That was how him and I were able to make that pairing. So he is tied to someone. But the question is, is, it, is that person at the Silver Twilight Lodge or is this another complete factor that we also have to worry about in the future? Almost guaranteed he's at the, whoever this is, is at the Silver Twilight Lodge. If it's one of those three men... Two of one of those men currently owns it. Another one owned the building before that one, and the other one came from Swill's Gullet and is connected. If one, either all three of them or one of them is there, and either one of them or all three of them is tied to Gaul, like I am, to Simon. Either way, what's going on, as far as we're concerned, at the Silver Twilight Lodge, it's definitely somewhere Albert's gonna go. We're fucked. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Call. Again, please be on the lookout for our Twitch streams. We stream Wednesday from 3 to 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time for World Building Wednesdays. Fridays, also 3 to 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time for the Kofi Donated Voted Game Currently Pray. And on Sundays, 3 to 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, the Editing Live Q&A. In the coming weeks, we'll be having a Call of Cthulhu Radio Edition show. This will be set 50 years after the current game, in the same game world, in the year 1973 at the tail end of the Vietnam War. A series of soldiers and nurses and participants of the Vietnam War will have to get together and return to a haunted hospital where visions still plague their minds from having come home. Until then, our last episode of this Call of Cthulhu show until we get back at it again will be Tuesday, April 20th. We'll see you then. The game system used today was Call of Cthulhu 7th Edition by Chaos. Music, sound effects, and ambient track places through Triune Films, Video Copod, and Artlist. You can find all of Trisic Gear Studios' podcasts on YouTube, Google Play, Apple Music, and Spotify. Please follow and like Trisic Gear Studios on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, at the Twisted Gear. Your players this evening were Janessa Coles, Lindsay Zelansky, Zach Baird, and Elizabeth Wells. Your audio operator tonight was Rob Hickey, and your GM or keeper this evening was Derek Snow. Have a good night, everyone, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>